executive session?
All right, let's open the regular monthly meeting, December 20, 2018, for the Scarborough Sanitary District. Call that to order, and now roll call. Let's call Mr. Charles Anderson. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Ben Viola. Here. Judith Cavallaro. Present. And Aubrey Strauss and Joe Carroll aren't present at this time. I am Nick Rico. Let's see. The next item on the agenda is approval of two sets of minutes. The first is November 15, 2018, budget workshop. Move approval. Second. So Jason moved, Charlie seconded. Any questions, comments, corrections? All in favor? Unanimous. All right, the second set of questions, I mean, um, minutes. That would be November 15, 2018, regular monthly meeting. Move approval. Okay. Second. Uh, Jim. Jim. All right. We have Jim. a motion and a second. Any corrections, Charlie? Yes, please. I'd like to offer correction for Second paragraph, Mr. Viola said all agreements tonight have been good. I think that should have been all arguments tonight have been, have been good. Uh, so I'd offer to change agreements to arguments. On page nine, uh, in the fifth paragraph, down, Chairman Rico asked if anyone would like to speak. If there'd be no one else, he closed the meeting. I think that should read, he closed the public comment period rather than closing the meeting. And then uh, under item B, Verizon Wireless Lease, 14 Black Point Road. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to delete the text trying to explain that motion. It's very cumbersome and it looks like, uh, it looks like it's filled with uh, an effort to incorporate an agenda note along with my motion. I think it should read, Mr. Anderson made a motion to respond to Verizon Chip for Debt, indicating that the trustees would be willing to consider modification of the lease for the site of option B and to further indicate that financial terms of the lease would also be subject to further evaluation. And you provided that to Robert Chip. I did. So yes, sir. We got it, Charles. <coughs> Thank you. Any more corrections, additions, corrections? All in favor on those minutes? None opposed. All right. Next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Um, the monthly report of operations, uh, a copy of which was provided in your uh, packet. Uh, for the month of November. Our average uh, flow for the month was 1.9 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 94% uh, biochemical oxygen demand removal and 98% total suspended solids removal with concentrations of 9 and 3 milligrams per liter respectfully. Copy of the pump station flows has included your packet. We had some high flows at pump stations 24, 3, 2, and 11, as I noted. Uh, this was due to a greater hitting a manhole and a dunston crossing development, allowing an excessive amount of inflow into the system there. Uh, the issue has been fixed, and the sewers are, are going to be jetted by the developer. Um, Knowles Industrial Services has completed the weir installation of the two clarifiers, completed the sandblasting and painting of all the mechanical equipment. This was work that was budgeted to be completed this year. Uh, they are scheduled to return in the warmer weather to complete the epoxy coating of the launders, which uh, is uh, proposed for budgeting for 2019. Uh, one of the VFDs at, the, at uh, pump station number two failed due to a pow bad power supply. Unfortunately, the power supply is no longer manufactured. Um, the VFD is uh, just 10 years old, actually. Uh, 
Uh, we had to replace the VFD with a new unit, including shipping. The total was approximately $4,000. Recently, we sold uh, three of our hose pumps to uh, the website Bid On Equipment. Uh, these pumps were replaced with Penn Valley double disc pumps approximately two year, years ago. We listed the pumps uh, at that time. Uh, we received uh, a little over $7,000 for the three pumps, and we deposited those funds in the fixed asset reserves. The sewer work has started on both the north and south phases of uh, phase one of uh, Scarborough Downs. Um, Underwood engineers had presented to me their findings of the bio process model that uh, they ran to simulate our operation uh, at the treatment plant to help us troubleshoot some of the uh, process difficulties that we have had historically, um, that has historically plagued the plant, specifically uh, poor settling or high SDIs. They had some very interesting findings and recommendations, specifically changing the process to an aero anaerobic, aerobic activated sludge process, which is also dubbed an AO process. Over the next years, we'll be exploring this option further with uh, DEP and uh, Underwood to evaluate its um, potential here at, at Settle. And uh, finally, uh, in a very untimely manner, the district's computer service server crashed over the weekend of the 8th. After two days, the, uh, our consultant determined the server was non-recoverable, after which he set up a temporary server. Consequently, we did not have access to our files or emails until later in the week, which resulted in the delay of the, the packet and the agenda getting put together. Fortunately, our backup system worked as designed, and we did not lose any data. Uh, the server was ironically scheduled to be replaced in 2019, and it will be replaced very early on in 2019, as we think of this. So uh, it, has to, it is currently on order and will be delivered shortly. That's what I have for not, uh, superintendent's report. Okay, any questions for the superintendent? Uh, two questions. Um, under the sewer work, the north, the north and south phases of the project at Scarborough Downs, mm -hmm. um, are we, do we have a presence there to adequately inspect the yes. construction project? Yes, we do. Um, I just want to be sure that if, if, if we need someone to be there on a full-time basis for depending on the extent of the work there, that we're not shy of that. Yeah. No, we've been very aggressive on that. Okay. Um, Under the uh, computer server issue, is that going to be funded this year out of contingency, and do we then, and do we do we then have to amend the proposed budget for 2019? Or I think by the time the server it? arrives, it's going to be next year. Okay, so it can't yeah. be made until yeah. after January 1st. Yep. Okay. I did have a question about the Biowin model and the AO process. One of the benefits of the AO process. The AO process, uh, the uh, under the anaerobic, the first phase of the process is an anaerobic phase, and during that phase of the process, the uh, biology or the bacteria um, take up phosphorus, and um, and then uh, and, and those types of bacteria actually are are very heavy. And so they have very different settling characteristics. So hence it would resolve the settling type of the slow settling issues that we have had. Cool. Just curious. Just a uh, note, Mr. Carroll arrived at 739. Just check. Uh, any questions beyond that? Oh, yes, Charlie. Yeah, just, uh, I guess following up on that, uh, on the report from Underwood Engineers. Um, they don't really address it, but the, 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 any of these three options that they discuss under their conclusions and recommendations impact uh, the hydraulic capacity of the plant uh, in any way that might affect our long-term planning in terms of additional capacity needs? No, no none of these would ultimately impact it impact that. Um, matter of fact, uh, right now we're running on one train, um, one of the three trains, and uh, we're, you know, we've treated 1.9 million gallons on average and we're rated at 2.5. So, no, we're, we, 
and the the intent is to stay on on one train at this at our current forty three train. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I can talk about this a little bit more about about after the meeting or at another time, but I was just curious with the AO process, you wouldn't need that nitrate recycle that's used for the uh, MLE process that they have listed here, correct? That, that is correct. You want a pure anaerobic tank, not an anoxic tank. And then, uh, an anoxic, the, if you have the recycle coming back, that's bringing back the nitrates, which have oxygen, which create that anoxic situation. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Uh, on to the next item, which would be correspondence. Um... I received a letter from Public Utilities Commission uh, with regards to our, our case at, uh, with PUC and concerning our CMP bills. Um, the, the letter addressed our high bill concern and the, the fact that it has, re was, has been resolved. Um, <laughs> I called PUC and told them that the letter is wrong on two accounts. One, we don't have a high bill issue. We have a uh, low bill issue, and it has not been resolved. Uh, you know, for the audience that's in front of us here, uh, we, we uh, our bill typically at the treatment plant is between seven to $10,000 a month. And for the past year, we've been receiving a bill for about $500 a month. Um, Despite calls of CM CMP, I may be good, but I'm not that good. Um, besides calls to CMP and to PUC. So I had a follow-up conversation. I called PUC and then the initial response was that they were going to note our file. I had to check a lot of that. Uh, they did call back and had a long conversation with me with regards to the, the issues and said they are working again with CMP on it. So I don't have anything other than that. Incidentally, I did see on the news this evening that they completed an audit and everything checked out. Yep, very few errors, so I guess we'll be being billed $500 a month yeah. in perpetuity. <laughs> I'm happy with that. I just, I just, uh, honestly, I mean, it works to our advantage, but at some point in time, they're going to figure this out. They're going to realize that they've lost $200,000 a year in payments from us, and they're going to come back looking for me. Actually, I'm just shocked by the incompetence of hmm. Central Maine Power and the PUC in being able to hear our concerns for over a year, PUC ineffective, CMP totally in another world. Um, I'm just, I've got no confidence in it whatsoever. I'm one guy who longs for the old days when CMP was a, a state regulated utility and a monopoly and things worked much better and more efficiently. I know that's a thing of the past and it will never return. But we are not definitely better off or being better served by this kind of arrangement. I, I will point out, Charlie, that um, I don't know if they ever will figure it out. I, I don't think they will catch up. And they I don't know if they'll backcharge for everything that we supposedly have used. I don't see how they can backcharge when they, they, they haven't can't. metered the use, so they don't know what our they use was. They don't know was. what our use was. So, um, Anyway, uh, I echo your comments in my lack of confidence in them fixing that problem anytime soon. That was a form letter they sent you, obviously. Yeah. And they said, you know, we'll check it out and we'll send you what, <laughs> what you're owed. That was a form letter that they're sending you. So they didn't even check into that. One of many form letters. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So. I, did, I did take the opportunity on the second phone call with PUC to... Um, Express to them that uh, we really, as as an industry, we really need a, an ability to call CMP direct without having going through the typical residential touch tone, press this, mm -hmm. press that scenario, and then talking to somebody that tells us that our power is okay when our pump station or treatment plant is offline, and I explained to them we have three-phase power, and they typically, they only monitor one of the legs, and if it happens to be a, a good leg, they're telling us everything's hunky-dory, and um, so 
whether that goes away anywhere or not. Well, I, I think in terms of the emergency planning, it's important to have communications directly to to them for emergency operations. And I'm sure, I know during during uh, emergency events, uh, especially storm related, that there's a hierarchy of communication that's set up. But I think you're you're smart to be in, and diligent to be pursuing them to get a direct line to call. Continue to pursue it, please. <laughs> okay. Any more questions about PUC, CMP, and any other acronyms we got in there? Okay. Um, that was the last agenda item under number five. Let's do six. Old business. We have none. New business. Number seven. A. Adoption of the 2019 budget. The proposed budget uh, summary for 2019 is included in your packet. Um, it's, yeah, it's in here. Okay, I saw it already. Um, last month we had the budget workshop where the trustees and I, uh, we went through the details of the budget, including each line item that makes up, up, up the budget. The budget summary before you is a summary of that budget with the following changes. The addition of a $6,000 item under capital expenditures for, from operating funds for the upgrade of the fire alarm system to a wireless system as required by the town. And the addition of $10,000 under composting slash sludge disposal as a result of bids received for a contract following of our sludge. Uh, we received two bids, each were within $500 of one another. Uh, the proposed budget is summarized as follows. Operating budget before capital expenditures is uh, $3,280,497, up 2%. Uh, Operating budget including capital expenditures is $3,398,497 up 3.2% from last year. Uh, fixed asset capital expenditures of uh, 477,500 and, cap and uh, capital reserve capital expenditures of 10,000. The total budget is $3,885,997 uh, which is an increase of 5.58% over the last year. Do I have a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. Can you get the Yeah. Okay. Any questions about the proposed budget? I just want to uh, also want to compliment the uh, superintendent again for uh, the fixed asset. <coughs> Replacement items that are incorporated into the budget off of, off of our replacement schedule. Um, that's the part of our budget that generally fluctuates the most dramatically. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think the items that are on here are timely to be done. Um, obviously, uh, obviously, replacement of the server, which is not not under that particular line item again. It's <laughs> one of the was one of the timely items to be scheduled. Unfortunately, we were six weeks late. I guess we're getting it done. Uh, the best I can know. Uh, so uh, I think the I think the I think the budget's very responsible. And uh, if it weren't for the capital items um, requiring replacement, we'd be we'd be in at under three percent. Any more questions, comments? All in favor? None opposed. Cool. Um, Scarborough Downs, Phase One South. On behalf of Crossroads Holding, uh, Gold Palmer has requested that Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees accept the sewer within the fa uh, this phase as sanitary district property once the uh, project is complete. 
the project was originally approved in August, but at that time the road was proposed uh, to be private. Uh, consequently, the sewer was to remain private. Since that time, the project has been modified such that the town will be, will be accepting the road as a public road. I have included in the packet a copy of, of the original and full uh, approval uh, along with this. Uh, the proposed development is as follows, four multifamily condominium buildings for a total of 32 units, eight duplexes for a total of 16 units, 10,064 square feet memory care facility and a 10,652 gallons per day of typical sanitary wastewater. Uh, 15, 1,579 feet of eight inch gravity sewer, 13 manholes, 843 feet of six inch sewer service. Um, and it's connecting to the existing sewer on Enterprise Drive and all of the proposed sewer infrastructure within the public right away and approved easements shall be transferred over to the district upon completion of the project. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Uh, the terms of the August uh, 2018 approval shall remain in effect except as noted. Uh, provide easement subject to district approval for the cross country sewer terminating en Enterprise Drive as depicted on sheet C206. And the proposed sewer from manhole 13 to 14 as depicted on sheet 204. Uh, final plans shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of the permits. Uh, note the following of sewer main shall be no closer than 15 feet from the edge of the right of way. And all sewer main services and force main shall have a minimum cover of five feet. Recommend approval with the conditions set forth by the superintendent. Second. Any other? Second. Thank you, Drew. Okay. Questions? Questions. Go ahead, Charlie. Um, the previous approval included uh, requirements for location. Burial, uh, the burial tape, tape. tape and wires so that we can locate these facilities in the future. That, that was in the original approval, yep. and that's 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 one of the recommended items that will remain in effect. Yes. Okay. And that, uh, yep. Thank you. Um, the other question I had is with regard to the acceptance of the roads uh, and. When the town accepts those roads, is that when the sewers will become public? And are they going to, in fact, deed those sewers to us or convey them in some formal fashion? Uh, how, how is that going to actually happen? They're going to have to convey them to, over to us in some formal fashion, including documentation and value, mm -hmm. uh, such that we can get it into our uh, uh, packet. So it's going to be, a, there will be a formal process yep. for them to convey uh, the infrastructure to us. Um, that won't happen before the roads are accepted. No. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any more questions, comments on the development? I have some comments. Go ahead. I, call, I called Go ahead. Dave today. I didn't have the plans with me today, so I couldn't get them all. But it looks like, <coughs> did they drop me? Hey, I'm not dropping. <laughs> so it's like a. I'm looking at it, and it's like a. Looks like a three, two or three foot drop from an incoming line. The in and the out are. Uh, there's a sense difference between the inlet and outlet of the sewer main, as required by PR 16. Uh, the the low section of the manhole is 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 just the structural, physical bottom of the manhole. Looks like got a two foot drop. What sheet? Okay. Uh, I don't see any drops. These below the side right? marks on the manholes. Manhole eleven. Is there an inlet to that one? Two. Two. Are those services? No, they're actual. I think they're services. One's a one service, service and one's the actual line. But still, even a service should be dropping two feet. Okay, that one there is showing as being. And we 
can adjust the services down, but um, we have a representative from Boral Pharma here. Should we have him come up and introduce sure. himself? <coughs> Please. I put a microphone. Yeah, and I yeah the microphone is uh, mobile, so yeah, yeah. please stay on Hold camera, on. though. <laughs> Name and <laughs> rank and serial number, please. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Doug Reynolds with Goral Palmer, um, project manager for the project. Um, and we've been working with Dave back and forth, um, getting these plans to him. And one of the, uh, what you're looking at probably is with the drop manhole is one of the comments Dave had made was, we could we could put our services into the the pipe, um, and we put the service into that. I mean, put the service into the manhole. We put that service into that manhole. Apparently, we just depicted it high, and it should be down low because again, the service is going to be was going into the pipe previously. So yeah, we can we can adjust that. If your actual line coming in is also, you can, uh, I don't know. You don't have is there a lateral going into that too? What's that? There's a lateral going <laughs> There's a, uh, yeah, there's this line here, and then there's this service, service right there. Okay. So, so they're coming in yeah, two feet above. Is, uh, I can't read that. I yeah. just don't have my glasses on. 140, 139. And the outlet is? Point two, and the other one's 37.3. So you got uh, one, yeah. the outlet's at 37, so you we can we can we can we just can we can adjust that we can just you can just adjust the inlets into that yeah. structure. Yeah, that's yeah. no big deal. We ran we ran them at minimum and neither you nor I saw it, so yeah. That's all. We'll correct that. So they okay. go under the water main? Yes, they will. That's one of the discussions that we've been having and, and uh, actually one of the issues that the the uh, on the north project that they were having issues with and um, um, they had to adjust do some field adjustments to make sure we maintained our cover. But uh, the so the service <coughs> would have to go under the water main yeah. to get to the manhole. That makes sense. Yeah. That'd be better anyway. Okay. Any other questions, comments on the plan? And we'll let the superintendent work that out with Goral Palmer, yes? Okay. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night, Dave. Good night. Thank you. Um, I have a point of order question. Thank you, Doug. Doug. Oh, that was Dave Reynolds. I'm sorry. Doug Reynolds. Point of order question. We're about to go to the next item. But we have members of the public here. Would, should we entertain the idea of maybe putting public comments before the executive session, or do we make these people wait? Uh, I assume you're here because you have something to say. I have a tiny bit to say. So I move we suspend well, the rules. I move we suspend the rules. Questions, discussion, comments? Yeah, I mean, potentially, depending on what they hear for and why we're going to executive session, we won't have a comment period afterwards. I don't want them doing two comment periods, thank you. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing to be no, voted. There's, no there's, there's nothing. There's no action item. item. If we go to executive action session, we're done. All right, I'm good then. Okay. Any more questions, discussion? All in favor of moving their public comments up? Okay, we're on number eight on the agenda, public comments. Please, when you want to make a comment, come up, take the microphone, introduce yourself, and have at it. Hi. Hi. Uh, Marvin Gates, 423 Black Point Road. Um, I'm going to have to
have to read a little bit. I wrote Dave an email and asked him a question, and I wanted uh, not only from Dave, but some clarification on the appropriateness of my question. Um, simply put, without reading the whole thing, I said on the fourth small paragraph, I would like to formally request to view some of the sanitary district's documents. Specifically, I would like to request the materials that Verizon has submitted to the sanitary district regarding their lease, as well as the materials that Verizon has submitted regarding their desire to amend their lease with the sanitary district. Um, will you please advise me as to the better way in which I should proceed with you in order to enable you to allow me to view the above mentioned materials? For example, if necessary, as directed by you, I will submit to the Sanitary District's Freedom of Information Act officer a FOIA request for the documents. Thank you. And Dave wrote back, uh, and I'm reading again. Uh, at this point, I believe that information falls under the executive session, but I would defer to our attorney. Uh, you have already seen the proposed location, which was discussed about and voted on during the last meeting. Uh, and then he cc'd uh, the, your, the district's attorney, uh, Peter Van Hemmel, <coughs> and wrote, uh, Peter, please advise, and signed Dave. And haven't, that was uh, a few days ago, pardon me, I, I mean the exact date, I, December 17th, the agenda, Dave explained, uh, because of the computer crashing, uh, there was some delay in that coming out, so uh, you nicely uh, spoke to me and outlined and wrote, followed up in an email, generally what this meeting would include, uh, RE Verizon. Um, so that's the background. I and I understand there's no answer to that question from the attorney yet. And, right. uh, with the season and all of that, I'm not excited. Mr. Anderson, you have a response to that? Well, it would seem to me that anything that we've done historically, if there's a copy of the lease that they would like to see of the existing lease, that, that there would be no problem in us. He already has a copy of it. Yeah, and, and I do have a copy. Well, I was asking specifically, as my email said, for the, what I'll call the resubmission documents that Verizon provided for you, for you to be able to go into your executive session. Oh. And that's why Dave said it's under the executive session rule. Now, I did look, I do see the executive session, Title I, MRSA, Section 4056C, and I look that up. And paragraph C, uh, which you know, it's very brief, uh, is discussion or consideration of the condition, acquisition, or the use of real or personal property permanently attached to real property or, or interests therein, or disposition of publicly held property or economic development. And this is the question I have. Only if premature disclosures of the information would prejudice the competitive or bargaining positions of the body or agency of you. And my question would be, in what way you can disclose, would the information that Verizon asked you to consider in your executive session, in what way would that uh, premature disclosure of that, meaning now, uh, would that prejudice the competitive? Uh. How? Could I ask you that? Could I answer that one then? Sure. Sure. Appreciate this it. Is how it would prejudice. They've come back and asked us to look at something. And that may impact how much they pay us in a lease. Now, if we discussed how much we thought they should pay us in a lease in open forum in front of the cameras with the microphones on, then they would know who was for what payment. And that's a negotiation in a real estate deal. Do, you know, if you bought a house, would you discuss with your realtor in front of the owner of the current house that you want to buy what you want to offer and what you're willing to go for your final offer? I don't think you would. That's why we go into executive session. OK? 
Okay, so if I, understand. I say I want a million dollars for that lot, you know, for rental, you know, Dave is going to say they probably won't buy that. And he'll ask, well, what's your ultimate, you know, final answer going to be? And then we'll direct them to go and negotiate on our behalf. That's what we would do. That's why it needs to be an executive. I completely understand that and appreciate you uh, you uh, clarifying that. Um, I would only add this one thing uh, with respect, and that is what Verizon has asked you to consider uh, isn't what you just said. I mean, perhaps it is, and I'm missing the point, but the negotiation over what Verizon asked you to consider, I completely understand its need to be private for the reason that you described. Well, what they asked us to consider was a different location than what we've already agreed upon. They also want to take more land than what we've already agreed upon. So that's the reason we're going into an executive session. Well, and I I'll say no more about it because I don't want to reveal anything else. I appreciate you uh, offering that information. Okay. Thank you. I'm not sure how this works. Did, Mr. Did Viola, you, do you have you something? Did you get a response from Mayor Wayne? Or? Uh, he, he has called me. We have traded phone calls. So he did return a call back, uh, and I called him back, and so we haven't made a connection. Yeah, we haven't made a connection. Thank you very much. I'm William LaCase. I live at 52 Old Neck Road. Um, just a small correction from your last record that will make my marriage a little easier. My wife's name is Lucy, L-U-C-Y Lacase, and not Lucille Lacase. <clears throat> well, thank you. I've accomplished pretty much everything I have. No, just First of all, I, I just want to say thank you for being so accommodating. You're an easy board to appear in front of, and we really, really greatly appreciate it. On the camera, because we're talking about the Scarborough Marsh, I would say a million dollars for the cell tower would be fine, and I'm happy to have Verizon hear that. <laughs> 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 you also commented that the towel is not being placed in the marsh while you're, while you're Yes, in please. Of, in the interest of clear clarity, I will not, you're making that comment. Well, I actually will not be at the executive session, so I don't know where you are planning to place the tower now. Well, but. the only thing I can say is you we'll just stated publicly that it's going to be in the marsh, and I would like the record to be clear that there's nothing to date that would indicate we are putting a tower in the marsh. I would agree with you 100%. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> um, I just want to make a couple of points, and we just really wanted to come tonight because we know we're not part of the executive session, and we know it's an ongoing conversation, and it's probably repetitive, um, but we do feel, as citizens of the town of Scarborough, and it seemed pretty clear when we were before the planning board, the planning board does also, that there is a better location for the tower if it's going to go on the sanitary district property. I, we're not part of the executive uh, uh, meeting, so we can't be pointing at maps, but I think you have a pretty good idea where we all felt that it ought to go, and I, I think the planning board feels the same thing. And it's sort of interesting with this process that it's hard to get all the parties together at one time and talk about these things, which is why we just took the time to come here. The second thing, when we came here the last time, and again, you were extremely accommodating at that point in time, we talked about the type of towers, and I know you hadn't done a lot of research about that, but I also know you're engineers, uh, and it, it really seems as though what we're calling the stealth tower, which is basically a pole with the antennas inside, is much more appropriate for anything that's going to be on the sanitary district. And the planning board is aware of that, Verizon's aware of that, the attorneys that are talking are aware of that, and we truly feel that you can, in working out your lease with Verizon, have a lot to say about obviously where it's, the tower is going to go, and also have a lot to say about what the tower would be. That clearly can be part of your lease. So we just wanted to come in, and, and frankly, and, and just say that again, knowing that you would all be talking and that we wouldn't be there. So. The tower is never going to be in the marsh, and I'm sorry I misspoke about that, but I was trying to start out with a little joke, frankly, because you're also accommodating. And it's like, nice. So we would really appreciate it if you do continue to show the flexibility that you have in terms of where the tower is going to go, because we actually think working with Verizon on that can be helpful to everyone. And we also would simply ask that you be extremely strict as to what kind of tower you're considering with your lease. And again, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it.
just take a minute. I'm Stephanie Smith. I live on um, Audubon Way in Scarborough, and I'm president of the board of the Friends of Scarborough Marsh. So we have a vested interest in what even comes close to the marsh, let alone is in the marsh. I want to thank you for your consideration of moving the site. And I, as I say, I won't take much time. I was not here for the last meeting, and I, so I'm a little coming in a little, little cold on this. But uh, whatever you can do to move the, the site away from the marsh, the farther away from the marsh you can get it, the better we like it. And I would reiterate what Mr. LeCay said about if there's some way to do a stealth tower and really require that Verizon consider that or do that, I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much. to the next item on yeah, the agenda. Mr. Chairman, before we leave, I, I guess I'd just like to make one comment that um, it, it, I'm not sure if the superintendent has had any direct conversations on this matter with either the planning staff or members of the planning board, um, but we're open to any kind of conversation with the planning board that they would like to have. And uh, our view is that they are the ones who will decide whether there's a tower that's warranted and what the and what the parameters would be under which they would approve a tower. And we're pretty much looking for them for guidance on what what the site would look like. So we're, we'd be willing to talk with them if they wanted to talk with us. We have had no inquiries that I'm aware of that uh, from, from the town in any way that that was seeking clarification or input from us regarding our position, but we're open to any discussion that they would like to have in, at any point in time. And I just want you to be aware of that. Um, it's not common that the board meets jointly with uh, either the town council or the planning board, but we have historically in the past had times when we've sat down uh, and communicated very clearly. We've done joint projects. Uh, we built sewer lines at the behest of the town uh, in cooperation with the town that the town has actually funded. So we've had close cooperation in the past, and we would continue to do that if the town had any take it, takes any initiative to approach us. We'd be open to conversations with the planning board or planning staff. So I just wanted to get that out there. That's our position continuously, but. Yeah. Apparently nobody's heard that recently, so I just thought I'd get it out there for whatever it was worth. Do you mind if I just stand up and respond to that? I don't think sure. it needs a response, to be honest with you. I'm just saying we're willing to meet with well. folks. <laughs> Again, it's Bill the Case, 52 Old Neck Road. It's sort of funny because we've gone to we've been in front of the planning board in multiple meetings on this, and they talk about uh, they talk as though this is all on your shoulders and they can't understand what you're doing down here. Uh, I, I, I'm not suggesting that's accurate or not. I'm just telling you what we're hearing from them. They're sort of acting like, oh, we can't believe that this is happening at the sanitary district. And then we come here and we're hearing that you would be uh, happy to talk to them. But I, I don't understand why the sanitary district based on that view, couldn't reach out to the planning board and say, why don't we have a joint meeting? Why don't we go have a site walk? Why don't we see where everyone would be in agreement with this? These are the kind of actions that could stop litigation from happening in the future, with, which would be a win-win for everybody. But we seem to be at a little bit of a standstill where the planning board's saying, well, this isn't our issue, this is the planning board. I mean, the uh, sanitary district and the sanitary district saying, well, we haven't heard from the planning board. I don't see what difference it makes which board reaches out to the other board. I don't. I suspect there are no rules that the sanitary district can't reach out to the planning board or that the planning board can't reach out to the sanitary district. So I would just ask or recommend, if that's something you're willing to do, reach out to them and see if we could have a joint site walk that may include even some members of the public and some members of Verizon. I think a lot of these issues could be easily solved if everybody could be talking together in one place. Thank you for uh, thank you. Cool. Well, I will say that it would probably be easier for the superintendent to work directly with the 
planning department because frankly i don't think it would be an easy task to get the planning board and the sanitary district board to meet together at one time in a timely fashion to resolve this whole issue the other thing i'd like to respond to is why is it the planning board and not the sanitary district the planning board is part of the town the town devised an ordinance back in 2014 that guided the town's actions in siting towers and deciding what goes into town. We didn't. We don't have those powers. They do. So we're going into executive session to discuss it, but that's about as far as I'm going to go on that. Can, do, can I ask a question? I know you, I, I think uh, you requested a site walk and um, it was in an email. Did you get any response to that? Um, yeah. Lucy LaCase, 52 Old Neck Road. Um, I think they said they weren't ready at this time. So that was, and I'm, I'm not sure where that came from, whether it was a formal decision or an informal one. But I would applaud your working with Jay and Jamel and having a conversation. I think that would be a really great proactive way and, and Thank you for suggesting that. That would be terrific. Thank you. You're welcome. May I have one more trick question? <laughs> be my guest. <laughs> after Marvin Gates, after your executive session, is there a way to find out what your decision is? Uh, no, because what we're going to do is we're going to work through our attorney and our superintendent to negotiate, renegotiate the lease with Verizon. If we tell you what we just did, we'd have to do it in front of the camera well, on tape. Mr. Chairman, we make no decisions in executive session. No, the we only don't. thing we will do is talk about the issues. The superintendent will get a sense of the board and he will go from there. But we don't, we don't vote on any items in executive session. We're gonna make, not making any decisions. And if there's a decision that will be made, it will be on our agenda to discuss or act on uh, a request by Verizon. You'll know about it. You'll be able to come and sit and listen to our discussions about it. It will be public. You know, we don't we don't go to executive session, take votes, and give and go that route. That's nothing. There's going to be no decision made in executive session. So there's not going to be anything to report to you. It's a fluid discussion of the issues. The superintendent will get direction as he coalesces the board's individual trustees thoughts and discussions he'll kind of summarize where he thinks he needs to go with it and we'll hear back from him again at some other time so I understand that thank you okay cool okay thank you for coming thank you all very much thank, thank you guys very much thank you okay um, next items on the agenda Executive session for a discussion concerning a lease of district property pursuant to Title I, MRSA, Section 405-6C, and executive session for a personnel matter for Title I, Section 405, MRSA. So mo motion to go into executive session. Second. We have Ben and Tom. Any discussion? All in favor? Returning. Oh yes, we need to return. We need to return. Where are we going, Wendy? Sorry? Where are we Tell going?
right. Yeah. Yeah, we do not vote on that. All right. Um, I need a motion to come out of executive session. No, so move. Just, so just come out. Yeah. You just come out. Back All right, we're back in session then. Fine. We have a budget summary. That is line item 7E under new business. Yeah, the 11 month budget summary including your packet and recommend approval. Move approval of the 11 month budget summary. Second. Okay, any questions, comments? All in favor? The only comment is when Richard. All right, motion carries unanimously. We already did public comments. Number nine on the agenda, trustee comments. We'll start with Charlie. Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, be safe, have a great time. Uh, kudos to all the staff, appreciation to Dave for his work through this, uh, through this whole year. Ben. Uh, thankful for past year and uh, look forward to a new, great new year and Merry Christmas to everyone. Judith. Merry Christmas to everybody and a happy, healthy 2019. Wonderful. How about you, dear Mr. Joe? I uh, apologize for my tiredness. It was my mother's birthday tonight. So happy birthday to your mom. It's her 60th, so I'm not sure if she'd be happy if I said that on the air or not, but at any rate. Um, so, uh, Merry Christmas to everyone and a Happy New Year, um, and hopefully it's safe. Thank the uh, superintendent for a job well done and the staff, and we'll cool. see you next year. Jason. Uh, same. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everyone, and uh, kudos to Dave and all the staff, Wendy included, on a fantastic 2018. Looking forward to 2019. Cool. I'll echo one. Everyone else's comments. Happy Christmas to all. Happy New Year. Nice job on the budget, Dave, for 2019. Hope it's a good one for all who are here and Jeremy, those listening. Could you apologize to Wendy for us making her sick? <laughs> for what? I apologize for making you sick and wait for us for executive session. Oh. I did that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I will entertain a motion to end the meeting. Move to be adjourned. Second. All in favor? Done. Thank you.